this is going to be cool. <laughs> the topics and opinions expressed on the Dudes and Beer podcast are intended for an audience of 18 and up and are solely those of the hosts and guests. They neither reflect the opinions or values of either the sponsors of Dudes and Beer or your mother. I mean, seriously. Have you ever heard these guys? They'll talk about anything. Whoa, whoa, hey, you think they're going to show it? <laughs> uh, they'll probably just blur it out. <laughs> whoa, check it out, Beavis. Grab your beverages and turn up your interweb. Solving the world's problems 12 ounces at a time. It's Dudes and Beer. But don't you know that no one alive can always be nature? When things go wrong, I seem to be bad. I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh, Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Austin, Texas. We are here coming at you live from the cave at the Austin Music Rooms. Uh, I am Chris Jordan, your host. We have with us, as always, Matthew Fitzgerald hello. and Stephen Bishop. Hello! We are fresh off the heels of Meekum, which we'll be talking about for a little while tonight, as well as some other topics, like, oh, you know... we could talk what, all night. What it, oh, oh yeah. dude, Meekum was just absolutely amazing. We could talk for days, and I'm sure that we'll be talking about it for a long time to come. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we'll also be covering some other topics out there, such as what it is to be a neighbor in this world, and uh, how to deal with bullies. Because that just seems to be a problem that's all over the world. Now. That's I mean, always in the news. Yeah, right. bullying, you know. So, um, on that note, everybody, we're going to hang on for this message from our sponsor. We'll be right back. Hey, are you a musician? Do you play guitar, bass, or synthesizers? Are you a studio engineer looking for that different sound? Well, fret no longer. Austin Hot Mods is there for you. From Boss to Ibanez, DOD to EHX and more, Austin Hot Mods provides over 50 different modifications and customizations to some of the most popular guitar pedals on the market, from vintage to modern. So if you're looking for that boutique custom sound on the Craigslist budget, look no further. Contact Austin Hot Mods today and mention that you heard it here on the Dudes and Beer podcast for 5% off your first guitar pedal modification. Visit them online at austinhotmods.com. Texas owned and operated and home of the Mod of the Month deal. That website again is austinhotmods.com. And we are back to the Dudes and Beer podcast. Yes. Well, gentlemen, what did y'all think of Meekum? How was it? I mean, it was it was the most incredible time. Um you know, we right? when we walked yeah, in, it was freaking awesome. Absolutely, just unreal. You know, and we we walked in on Friday and we met up with our our media contact David. Yep. Um, and he got us set up. You know, he was busy, so you know he kind of you know he's a busy walked man. Us. He's always busy, you yeah. know, and I understand it. So he he walked us over to our spot, and he walked us up to this spot. Maybe you guys saw you know pictures on Facebook and Instagram and that, but he walked us over oh. to literally. Right before the cars go on the stage. Yeah, like yeah. right next to the staging block. Like right there's there. the auction block, and then there's the staging block, then there's the line, and we were like right there, man. Absolutely. It was like I mean, in the thick of it. It was like the best seats in the house almost. You know? Yes, clearly. Yeah. yeah. And every every car every car that went on that stage was right in front of us. Yeah. Like sixty seconds before it went on the yeah, stage, yeah. it was absolutely. And I unreal. mean, like some of them yeah. arms reach. There's yeah, a, arms there's, reach. There's a great picture that Stephen took of me at the end of the day as we were wrapping up next to that GT. The GT yeah. next to the Ford GT that yeah. was about three feet away from me as I'm wrapping yeah. microphone cables, and I'm like, I don't yeah. think I've ever been as nervous wrapping a yeah. microphone yeah. cable as I am right now. That, that same <laughs> that same car went for four hundred fifty thousand in the four twenty five. Yeah, four twenty five. Yeah, okay, yeah, four twenty five. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, half, half a million dollar I mean, cable yeah. ding. Yeah, I've got, <laughs> <laughs> it's all I kept thinking. Yeah, don't yeah, rap too hard, Chris. <laughs> right? Yeah, I've got uh, I've got the results up right here because oh, they wow. post on Meekum on nice, Meekum, nice. Uh, their website. They post all the results from each of their uh, each of their previous auctions. Yeah. Um, and that uh, that 
06 Ford GT Heritage Edition with yep. the racing paint job, the mm. orange stripe of the front, and the baby blue. I mean, it's just a classic yeah, paint job. Like, I dude, love you that. see that car, you know what that yeah. car is. Right? The car went for 425 k I mean, it serious. It went for the same price money. as is the last one? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, those things, I mean. Yeah. They're not cheap. <laughs> nah. No, no. And and that's just it. Like it is it is an absolute dream factory for, you know, people that love automobiles, people that love cars, automobile memorabilia, rock and roll memorabilia, you know, yeah. like there I mean even the marriage of the two, like we were saying yeah. outside earlier to the guys, there was the Eddie Van Halen coupe. Right, that was there for Ooh, sale? There was, I didn't even know that was going to be there. There was a there was a Ferrari that was originally owned by Whitney Houston. There was right. an eighty one Ferrari. They had know. guitars signed by Taylor Swift. Yep. They had uh, ACDC, well, the I'll Rolling buy Stones. For a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody bought it for more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But it's you yeah. know, I mean, it's just the 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 spread. I think you I'll know, the shake amount it off. of the amount. Of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the amount of things that they bring in and the amount of, you know, different people that they are able to bring into the auctions, you know, it is, it's, yeah, it's a family-run company. We went over that multiple times oh, God, on yeah. Saturday. And but it's also a family event. It. it is. You it know, is. it's amazing. Like, you can bring everybody, and it's a car show, and it's yep. an event, and there's it's a so show, welcoming. and there's demos, and there's, I mean, well, it and is... It, well, and this year they actually had the slot car racing track for the kids, and even even the CEO oh, was, was cool. like, "I've been trying to get a spot on it, and I can't even get on it. <laughs> yeah, right. Like it's so packed with kids, I can't even get on it. It's so, so funny to hear him say that. <laughs> just amazing. But yeah, really I mean, the whole amazing. thing is just a truly carnival atmosphere. That yeah. is, it's invigorating and exhilarating once you're inside of it. It really is, uh, you know. And then there was the post that I put up. That actually ended up being Frank Meekum, the yeah, guy in yeah. the orange hat, yeah. was actually Frank Meekum, yeah. and yeah, yeah, like he was literally like we were there yeah. as we were getting ready to leave, trying to find David just to say goodbye, wrapping yeah. up the day, and there was this beautiful car for sale for one hundred and sixty-five thousand was the going bid, and yep. you saw Frank Meekum come up and give this guy a hug, and he was like, "Hey, man, you know, you came from all the way across the country for this car, for this today, like we've come this far." You know, right. <laughs> you really want to let that go? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, you really want to walk yeah. away from this yeah. uncomplete, yeah. unfulfilled? Right. And it's yeah. like, it's so crazy because there are guys out there like... Um, this car's uh, for well, you. Well, <laughs> uh, like Mark Delzell, yeah. you know, the lead auctioneer. People yeah. like that, whose job it is to literally whip these people into a frenzy and to, yeah. be, that, to be that Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. It's like, come on, man. Yeah. You know yeah. you want this. Like, man, you, know, you, you know you want it. But they, but they, also, they also know how to really sell in a friendly way in a way that right. in a way that brings people in right oh, yeah. you know i mean yeah. when they right before they start the auction right before they start doing memorabilia and whatever you yeah. know they showed they showed this video um, and oh, play yeah. like Thunderstruck and yeah. whatever. And, you oh, know, it, dude, just, they do that like at every auction, I think. Yeah. And it is so awesome and it gets the crowd excited. Exactly. It gets oh, yeah. going. Exactly. It gets the energy yeah. up yeah. in the it, room and the energy yeah. stays at that level until the very end of the auction. I mean, it yep. really does. Oh, yeah. And that's amazing just to watch in itself. And they've got a cool know? video for it, too. Like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. It's so no, it's cool. it's some great content. Like I said, for someone who does AV for a living, um, what they do for NBC Sports Network, NBCSN, yeah. is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, as is actually the stuff from Big Red. I actually went on today um, while I was doing stuff because we actually released today the interview from Big Red. Uh -huh. uh, we've been releasing everything in chunks uh, Sunday, the day after. Right. Um, you know, we let things end up. Um, and then we actually put out the whole show uninterrupted. Uh, without the 15 minute breaks yeah. put in and uh, posted the whole thing and then we posted the interview with the CEO yeah. uh, Dave Majors yesterday we posted um, RJ and Josh from Big Red Racing yep. today uh, the world's fastest Camaro and that's just like Insane the the land record that they did right. with an air aspirated engine. Is well, just... and well the you know the the speed record that they set was actually with a supercharged motor. So their, yeah, their right. supercharged motor was the one that goes over. Well, no, no, they're they're getting a supercharge for the upcoming race. Well, they have both. Yeah, for, they have both for okay, for okay. the car. Um, and the and the supercharged one is the one that goes over two fifty. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. And it is, I mean, which you know, still it's, though, right? Well, and you know, when you talk well, about, you got to think though, it's a supercharger without the crazy scoop on the front, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's still not, yeah, like, like the engine, like the yeah. engine 
doesn't like pop, pop out. out. No, yeah, it's exactly. Pop out. No, it's it not just, over the hood. It just peaks a little yeah. bit. It yep. just peaks a little bit over. You know, I mean it. You know, and to talk about that, and to and to link it to you know when we were talking to Dave Majors, the CEO of Meekum. You know, I remember, you know, when I asked him, like, hey, you know, what are your favorite cars? Like, what was, you know, like, what was your, like, you know, what was your car that got you into cars yeah, when, yeah. when you were a kid and whatever? What do you love? And he was like, you know, I mean, primarily I like late model exotics. Yeah. And then he was like, you know, really, you know, my favorite cars are the uh, late model exotics and they have to go over 200 miles an hour. And I was just like, I was just like, man, have to, man, <laughs> got to, like, yeah. I mean, got to. exactly <laughs> requirement, right? Yeah. You know, and to th- and to think about that, you now know, I, I mean, know why you're like, CEO. right? Absolutely, and you know, to think about like, you know, for me, the fastest I've ever been was 146 miles an hour on a motorcycle, yeah, and even that was like, holy balls, I'm going fast, yeah, yeah. And when you think about being in a car and going over 200 miles an hour, dude, yeah. I mean, that is just like, yeah, I mean, that's human engineering. That my is, eyeballs that is pop heart, out. Well, that is soul. That it is, is. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Some and G-force. to know that, like him and his father, RJ and his father, built that car. You know, right. they built Big Red, right. and yeah, then, and then the, they, yeah. of course. Uh, auctioned off the the replica of it, uh, the replica of, of the original model mm-hmm. um, for uh, the project for heroes. Project for heroes. Yeah, it was uh, the it, yeah. the ride to recovery actually. Right, right. With the project for heroes. So um, yeah, that was an absolute like great great moment. I love seeing great. that. Oh, I was so you, so happy that we came back on air just in time for that. Right. And uh, it was it was phenomenal. So yeah, right. and then on top of that, we narrowly narrowly avoided a Houston Spring uh, by like half a day. Gentlemen. Right. Yes, you we know, did. Yeah. You got out early, early. Yeah, you right. left on Saturday afternoon. But me and Chris actually back. rode through it. Yeah, yeah. Right. We well, we rode through part of it. Yeah, we yeah. didn't rode through a major part yeah, of no. it, but like it wasn't horrible at any time. You know where you couldn't see or anything, but you were losing traction. By a the time bit. Right. by the time I got home, I was already seeing reports of flooding in Houston. Oh yeah, and well, then by the time twenty four hours went by, they'd had nineteen inches of rain. Right. Well, uh, and that was on Sunday. You know, yeah. like you know, like you said, I yeah. had to leave before you guys because I was filming a scene that night on on Saturday yep, yep. night. And then Sunday afternoon, I had a photo shoot for the same for the same film that I've been working on. Oh wow! And. The photo shoot was from 4 to 6, so I left my place at 3.30, and I got out on Mopac, and it was an absolute monsoon. I mean, it was literally like, Whoa. I, like, you know, the car, oh, yeah. the car like, yeah. three car lengths in front of me, like, I had trouble seeing it, you wow. know, I, there were a couple times where I could feel the car hydroplane a little bit, yeah, I was yeah, only yeah. doing, I was only doing well, we 40, had a, 45 miles We had a couple moments hour. of those, too, where it was, you yeah, know, and did. it was mainly on some low-lying spots up around Bass right. Trip, stuff like that, where we and were it was a perfect time when hills. it was a perfect time for Chris to mention uh, I, I need to get some new tires. <laughs> right? Yeah, I need some as well, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It was it, one of those moments of like, hey, yeah, by the way. I, yeah, by I the way, really I haven't ever tires, gotten new so. tires. <laughs> no, well, I have, but it's just been a minute or piece <laughs> since I have. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's just it, the whole Meekum experience is something that really will blow your mind, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, look for it on NBC Sports. SN, uh, they will be doing a show from Indianapolis. Heck, coming uh, up here buy soon. a $30 ticket and show up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's way worth the day price to go check it out because, like I said, it is it is a visceral, visceral experience. And we'd like to thank everybody from Dave Morton to, you know, just everyone that was a part of that day. You know, Dave yeah. Major, oh, yeah. Sean Tajapuri from West Houston Muscle Cars. Absolutely, you know, yeah. Mark Delzell, the lead yep. auctioneer, RJ and Josh All from Absolutely. Uh, Antoine, yep. you know, Antoine, our contact. Antoine, who has Antoine been, absolutely. You know, <laughs> just on, An- boots Antoine's on the been, ground. <laughs> Antoine has been there with us since the beginning, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Since the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Since you the know? And then Kate. Yeah, the, Kate. The nice... Kate was amazing. And oh, I, she was fantastic. And it's and it's so funny that like you know like I remember when I was waiting in line at that Starbucks to get a scone for breakfast. You know, I ended up I ended up standing behind this guy named Joe or no, sorry, John. Um, and John is the head HR. Uh, representative that's for right, Mika. Right. Yeah. Really? And he, so I got to talking to him about yeah. the podcast and about yeah. everything and whatever. Oh, that and, is so uh, sweet. 
And that's when he was like, oh, man, that's really cool. It's really cool you guys are doing this here. Um, you should talk to Kate, who yeah. is our, you know, who is our social media expert, right? You'll see her walking around. He was like, yeah. he was like, she's a short girl and she'll have an iPad in her hand. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, okay, okay, great, you know. And then, like, literally, like twenty minutes later, I went to walk across the stage, and I saw her, and I and I rolled up and introduced myself, and and she was amazing to us, you know. She posted, uh, she posted a picture of us and tagged us in it on Instagram and, mm -hmm. and whatever. I mean, nice. she was really, yeah. she was she was so good to us. Everybody was so good to us. And it, it, again, it goes back to what we've been talking about for three, four days now. That Meekum family atmosphere, yep, absolutely. The, I mean, the, you know, just those aspects of that community, that family, great, all of that, great hospitality. Well, mm -hmm. well, it it really is, and you know, even the gold bitter section, all that kind of stuff. They really make you feel like you want to be there, yeah, and like right. you belong. Um, it's great. It's great. Now, Fitzy has actually just poured us a yes, nice he beverage here. What have you poured us out of your growler? Yes, over there, my I. Uh, so oh. I went over. I went over to see my guys at uh, my guys at Pine House Pizza here yeah, in yeah. town on the south side of town, um, and I brought a growler of the ATX Pale Ale. Um, and I, I mm. couldn't I couldn't tell you what it's hopped with, and I know better than to ask um, because I've worked in the business and whatever. Sure. But it is a nice, smooth, hoppy pale ale, very drinkable, very easy going down, and, and a nice clean finish too. With a lot of hoppy beers nowadays, yep. you're getting beers that are you know, there's a bite afterwards, or it yeah, kind of yeah. lingers. You know, it's just it's. You know, and if you're not a hop head, yeah, then it's just too much, and it, it leaves is. and it leaves a well, bad I've taste. I've told you in before that's what that's what gets me, where it feels like someone's yeah. trying to like you know push their finger through the back of my eyeball. Right. Well, and I used to, you know, when I used to bartend, um, you know, I would tell people, you know, hey, these beers that we make, they're hoppy. Most of them are hoppy. Yeah, yeah. But they're not beers that you chew on, and you're not going to taste them four hours later when you're trying to have dinner. Oh yeah, that's, that's not the nice. way. These, that's not the way these beers work. That's and this is yes, and that's this is very a, fluffy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this fluffy. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. It is very nice. It is very nice. You get some. You get some really nice classic piney notes. Yeah. Um, from the hops, also a little bit citrusy. Yeah, I, I taste a little clean. citrusy there. You get you get a little bit of hop aftertaste, but then yep. it fades, and that is the mark of a really good beer. Yeah, is that you taste it, mm -hmm. and then the finish is clean. You, yeah, you know, I mean. Yeah, unless unless you're really looking for something that is you like, know, you're, like you were high saying, octane, it's not a power, it's whatever. that linger, yeah. you know. Exactly, yeah. exactly, and that's the nicest thing about these beers, and and frankly, most of the beers that they make over at Pine House, those guys are, I mean, those guys have the yeah. Their, everything I've had so far that you've brought, you've brought a good three growlers now yeah, from them, have. and everything, it, nothing seems to be too um, intense, uh, too heavy handed on right. top. No. Right, you know, which, which, as you said, can be the tendency nowadays. It's, right. a, it's a going trend. Well, and to see how high you can take that e IBU. Right, you know exactly. And, and and the guys at Pint House, I mean, they love to use hops, and they use a lot of hops, but they use them in the right way. Yeah, as opposed to overusing hops at different points of the brewing process, where you're going to bring out a lot of those lingering flavors and super oily texture. And things that just kind of stick with you. Yeah, they're yeah. really they're you really don't want really that. professionals at developing a beer that is hoppy, but the hops are the flavor. Yeah, as opposed exactly, to exactly. as opposed to really you know yeah. overdoing it on the texture with the hops. Yeah, or the mouthfeel with the hops or the finish or anything like yeah. that. So so yeah, I mean I. I love stopping by to see those guys. You know, I used to work with a lot of those guys, and and it's really nice to be able to stop over and see them before I come to the podcast, chat it up, you know, whatever, and yeah. then see what they have, uh, see what they have fresh going on. While I was there, I uh, I tasted their uh, their ghosts, um, which is a sour beer. It's a very low ABV. It's like three and a half percent ABV. Yeah. Um, and it's a sour beer, but it's, I mean, it's not too sour. It's not in your face. It doesn't, you know, it's not like you're sucking on a warhead mm, yeah, or a yeah. sour patch kid, yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, the flavor is even and smooth and it finishes clean. Yeah. And that is what you want out of a beer. It is, you know? it is. I mean, you want to you want Well, to you want something it. typically refreshing, you know. It's either going to be, just the same way with wine. 
Absolutely. You know, it's going to be paired with food or with something else right. or just taken by itself. And especially whenever it's taken by itself, you really have to con- consider those things because you aren't trying to accentuate something else. You're trying to make it stand out as much as possible on right. its own. Yeah. And that's a very delicate balance as a brewer. Absolutely. Not to, uh, not to just like totally divulge here, but to go back to what we were talking about with uh, with um, uh, Big Red, yeah. Big Red Camaro. Yeah. So I'm on their website, and they have they have four engines. Oh, okay, for their yeah, car. yeah. Okay, I know it's like wow. peanut. So, yep, the peanut, peanut. <laughs> which interestingly enough, the peanut, their smallest engine, still makes. 850 horsepower. Yeah, yeah, no, it's Jeez. with freaking Hosmo. Without, without any forced induction, that's no supercharge, no, no anything. That's just it. They're still on a naturally aspirated engine hitting like 230. Right, I mean, those, like 230, you know, 235. Right. Jeez. So then they have the Bullet, which is another naturally aspirated, which uh, puts out 990 horse. Yep. The Monster, that one looks like it has. Uh, do, 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 do. That one, I don't know if that's forced induction. I think that one is actually... Um, is that their EFI engine? Um, I can't Because tell. he said that they yeah. had no, one that was electronic. Yeah, no, right. One so then they have the supercharger. Yeah, the, the, so the Monster is still carb, um, but that one makes 1,100 horse, and they use wow. it for their flying mile. Wow. And then the Elephant is the supercharged tank engine, yes. as they call it. Uh, Just five, the sound of that. 598 cubic inch. I mean, we're talking 600 cubic yeah. inches. Pro charger induction, EFI. No, that's what I was showing Stephen one, the other day, yeah. where people had taken an actual Sherman tank engine. Yeah. Like a 15 right. valve and friggin' dropped it into a car. <laughs> right. <and> it's like... <laughs> but, this like one, yeah. but this one will make more, like, usable power, and it's lighter. And this one is, yeah. a, is a straight up, like... Forced induction, EFI, um, 600 cubic inch, yeah. and it nice. makes, depending upon how high you push the, the PSI out of the supercharger, 1,400 to 1,900 Wow. Horse. And that's, Almost that's what they were saying. Almost 2,000 horsepower. That's, what's, that's what they were saying they were putting in for Pikes Peak coming up yeah. because of yeah. the altitude. Right. The altitude right. is the EF, yeah. EFI. Engine. Yeah, because it'll mess with the, it'll mess with the carbs when, yeah. you get up yep. to, uh, Two, when you get up to altitude. Yeah. 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 Too high of an altitude, huh? Well, and, you know, speaking of people with beefcake cars, stuff like that, you know, our next topic was neighbors and what it is to be a neighbor. And, right. you know, as some of you may know Won't who tune in, there's, there's, a, there, there's a, not a disparate age difference, but an age and generational difference dif- definitely between myself and Stephen and Fitz. Right, um, correct. I'm 40, Fitz is 25? 27. 27. That's correct. So, you know. Um, it's it's a little bit different, and these concepts have changed. You know, like I remember growing up, I come from a Cajun family, and I remember my grandfather, um, he was medically disabled, but had his garden, he hunted, he fished, mm-hmm. he froze fish, he froze, you know, his his meat, everything else. And Buddy, if you came over to his house and had a 12-pack and barbecued, you were... You were you were going home with a sack of groceries from the garden, mm-hmm. like that's what neighbors did. You know, he was a he was brought up as a farmer, yeah. and stuff like that. And you took care of your neighbor because hey, sometimes your crop didn't work out, and your neighbor had to take care of you. Exactly. Right? You know, so there was this really not just copacetic, but um, cooperative mm-hmm. means between neighbors. Yeah. You know, right. like you look after my property when I'm gone, I look after yours, and right. you know. Um, what what did you grow up with? Is I mean, I grew up in an apartment, so like uh, we passed by my apartments the other day after yeah. purchasing beer on the west side of Houston. We sure did after seeing Billy from ScaryDad dot com. ScaryDad dot com. Yeah. Everybody, um, <laughs> Billy. There you <laughs> go. Awesome. A little shout somebody, out. Somebody moaned in the background. Shout out to Billy. Awesome. But uh, seriously, you know, it's like I grew up in an apartment, so my concept of neighbor is totally different than hmm. like a house concept of neighbor. Right. You know, someone that you share a property line with. Like, right. It was like I shared a common foyer yeah. with, like, four people. So, right. you know, like, you had to be on a different level with the neighbor that you had. So what right. was your concept of neighbor growing up, steve Well, to sum it up, you know, like, uh, when I was younger and, you know, in my younger period of, of life or whatnot, uh, anyways, uh, basically always lived in a house or a mobile home on some land. So there was plenty of space. You know, there was no, like, you know neighbors complaining about what you're doing or anything like that yeah um you know your neighbor and yada yada you know and and um 
but then you know uh, later on a lot of my my uh, time living was in apartments yeah and that's where things I had to adapt a little bit you know it was you know you have people right next door you're sharing a wall a lot of times stuff like that yeah. um, right now you know I just purchased that new house so mm -hmm. and this one's a little bit different I'm in a house but at the same time I'm in HOA and we're all kind of close together and there's uh -huh. rules to abide by and so it's yeah you know there's so it, you know I guess I've had a little bit of everything I guess I could say maybe all right well, what about you Fitz well I grew up when I grew up I uh, I grew up in Moorhead Minnesota um, which is literally right next door to Fargo North Dakota they're kind of twin cities there um, and it is what I will call a medium-sized area yeah okay um, so it is, you know, imagine like, imagine if you sandwiched like two San Marcos together. Yeah. Um, I don't know the exact population, but it's something like that, right? So it makes for a, a big area, but still not, you know, city, right? Sure. Um, so when I grew up, we, our house that I grew up in was right on the south edge of Moorhead, Minnesota. Okay. So we were, you know, we were you know, only like, you know, a, a mile or less before we were at the grocery store and we were at, you know, anything like that. We were in a neighborhood, right? And I grew up um, in a uh, in a cul-de-sac, right? So, like, right on the corner of this cul-de-sac. And so, you know, my, what I remember growing up, um, you know, uh, as far as, you know, the aspect of neighbors and mm -hmm. community and that sort of thing, um, I grew up um, on the very end of the cul-de-sac, or the very start of the cul-de-sac, rather. And when I was growing up, you know, I rode BMX bikes and I'd ride around and whatever. And my parents would say, "Hey, you know, like, you know, you can, you know, you can go ahead and ride around and go see your friends, but stay within the cul-de-sac." Yeah, yeah. You know, which mm, yeah, was a yeah. good, which was a good, sure. like, you know, block and a half of houses. Yeah. And I had, right. you know, we had a couple houses on the block that were, you know, that were older folks. Um, and we had a bunch of houses on the block where. You know, it was it was people like my parents, yeah. you know, who had younger kids, um, and we all kind of grew up together, right? You know, so I had, you know, I had a good number of friends out on our block, and it was, you know, it, it was really, it was really amazing to grow up in that sort of circumstance. It kind of, it kind of reminds me of like, uh, you know, what you would think of as suburbia but it wasn't suburbia yeah right? yeah you know i mean it was we had well, it was our a, it was a town right yeah. but like you know our location specifically on this cul-de-sac um you know i mean we had we had friends in in multiple different houses down the block you know we'd go over and we'd play video games and we'd sure. go ride bikes and we'd go whatever you know i remember um i went out i went out riding bikes with a with a, a good friend of mine just down the block and it started raining, and, you know, I was probably eight or nine years old, and we thought it was really cool to, you know, like, ride our bikes through the puddles in the gutters. Oh, yeah. And, you know, get just, like, you know, dirt and water marks all up our backs. We just got, you know, just yeah. completely oh, dirty sure. and filthy. And when I got home, you know, my parents were like, what did you do? Like, blah, 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 you yeah. know? Like, you know, they weren't mad, but they were like, come on. You just got yourself all yeah, dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, like that's... Just being a well, kid. It's, it's what right. you did. I mean, heck, growing up in Houston, yeah. it was something that, and you look back on it now, it's like, oh my God, the septic suicide that that is. But yeah, whenever it would flood like that, like, we go out and make little paper boats and, like, float them around and shit. Yeah. It's like, hey, wait a minute. There's some pretty bad water floating around there. I don't know if you should be necessarily <laughs> right. out wading around in that right now. Right. And we, um, you know, in, <laughs> in Fargo-Moorhead, you know, we had, in, in Minnesota and and then, you know, part of North Dakota as well, we get a lot of precipitation because yeah. of all the lakes in that. Sure. Right. And I remember a couple of times growing up, you know, when we got really, really heavy rains, you know, our, our street out in front of our house would flood up oh, to yeah. like two feet deep or a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Right? You know, so there were like... No I mean, different there were than plenty, playing in the fire hydrant. That's right. You know, there that's were plenty it. of times where kids would go out and like, you know, like swim and play around in the water you yeah. know my my parents were always like no yeah. that's dirty like, yeah don't yeah don't do that, do that. You know? <laughs> exactly um, yeah, i guess i was a latchkey kid so <laughs> hey, what are you gonna do stop me i got till like four thirty, five o'clock smooth right <laughs> smooth. depends yeah. on what traffic is <laughs> <laughs> love you mom uh, right. <laughs> I'm, in the, it, I'm in the house mom yeah, yeah okay 
But it definitely, you know, it definitely was one of those things where we had, you know, our neighbors that we had, we were all good to one another. Yeah. Uh, we had a really, really solid, like, community there in the cul-de-sac of just, you know, people who, people who could get together... Yeah, Real you know, you, you had parents. You had parents that were there at the house. Like I was, like I said, I was a latchkey kid. I was brought up by a single mom in an apartment. Um, mm -hmm. So pretty much from like fifth grade, sixth grade on, um, I was at home, and, and my brother was there. He was in high school at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like most of the time, I would come home and come sixteen. He was at work, so I was by myself at that point. But. Right. Yeah, you know, there were always neighbors, though, that knew what was going on. Right, there were always right, right. neighbors that had other kids, and they'd be like, hey, what are you kids? I'm going to tell your mom, man. Exactly. You know, right. like, yeah. And, yeah, you know, like, we'd go out and throw dirt clods at cars, like, stupid shit that, like, boys do. Like, girls don't do this shit, nah. guys. They just don't. Right. You know, they do other That'd things. That'd be cool if they did. They do but... other things, but they literally <laughs> just don't do the wrongfully, like, gremlin, mischievous shit that well, boys do. some do. Yeah, some, some do, but some it's not do. the majority. Not, but not the not majority. Often, not often. Not the majority, on occasion. But, you know, it's not like, hey, let's, you know... Let's ride around and rearrange some real estate signs on a Friday night. Right. You know, some shit like that and, like, point yeah. all the signs to your buddy's house. Yeah. So that whenever he wakes up hungover on Saturday morning, there's a bunch of people knocking on the door. You know? Yeah, right. Girl, girls don't normally do shit like that. Right. <laughs> a homeowner walks out and there's a sold sign but, on his lawn. You know, <laughs> like, living in an apartment now, and I guess seeing the difference between society now and the way it was in the 80s. You know, because there's mm -hmm. definitely a societal difference between, you know, like, I remember I could literally go to the library that I pointed out to y'all and leave my bike unlocked. Yeah. Like, just leave my bike and go in and come out a couple hours later and ride my bike home. Like, I left my lo bike locked, like, inside Whoa. my, inside my, like, back gate. And who was And I sheriff? remember it shocked me the day that my bike got stolen from inside my back gate because it wasn't locked inside my back gate. Right. Like, nobody could see inside my back gate. They right. had to jump over to see what's going on, but damn, why yeah. the fuck would I lock my bike inside my back gate? It's right. my back gate. It was yeah. already locked. Yeah. <laughs> but somebody managed to jump in and jump steal in. my bike and oh, part it out for... Yeah. That was like my seventh or eighth grade year. I was and they always say somebody you knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it was literally my next door neighbor. It was somebody that I knew. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, dude, I had a I had a neighbor like you know three or four houses down from us who you know he had a he had a nice uh, like racing BMX bike, yeah. it's like like Schwinn racing bike, and he put uh, spin rims on. Do you remember spin yeah, yeah, rims? Yeah, yeah, I remember the, like, when they the, came like, out. the like the like three spoke mag rims that you oh, could run yeah, over yeah. with yeah. a monster truck and they wouldn't bend. Yeah. So he had spin rims on his bike, and his bike got stolen at one point. Okay, and they like you know whoever stole it. Took the wheels off, put different wheels on, like trying yeah. to, you know, like whatever. What? And the cops ended up finding the bike. They found it because of the serial number and the whatever, yeah. right? It turns out that the, when the kid got his bike back, like there were like a couple of different stickers on the frame and they're like, yeah. you know, whatever. But everything else was intact except for the rims. They took the spin rims off and put some other rims on. The rims they put on were worth more than the spin rims that they took on. <laughs> so, so, so again, my neighbor, my neighbor made, my neighbor oh my neighbor made money off of his bike getting stolen. Yeah, that's awesome. Which is obviously that's not awesome. going to happen every That's a very time, ironic but, way to upgrade. Yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly. Well, exactly. It's very strange. Know, it's funny because living in, being an apartment dweller now, and we're looking at moving into a rent house, something like that coming up whenever our lease is up. Yep, but, yep. Um, living in an apartment now is so much different. Like the the actual mm. respect that happens for your neighbor and the oh, person next God. for you is just not there. I think it's deteriorating. Yeah. And I know I've talked about it on the show before. You know, like going to the people in the in the apartment complex right across the fence and being like, "Hey guys, if you don't mind turning it down, I'm in my bedroom right here, and I can hear every word coming out of your radio. Like right. I can hear every beat and every word in the song." Right, um, yeah. and that just shouldn't be. So if you could turn it down, that'd it's be not great. like home improvement anymore, where Tim's talking to his neighbor. Yeah, yeah. And... Well, well, and that's how it should be. Right, you know? it and should I'm, be. Yeah. I'm on that basis with a couple of my neighbors, but these guys moved in not too long ago, and or at least one of them did. 
Um, and literally, like, the last week or so, I've asked this car, like, hey, you know, if you could turn your music down, that'd be great, because they're just, like, chilling, like, right. 10, yeah. 15 feet away from my apartment wall. Yeah, right. You, you don't you need know, it that just loud. Just blazing some music. Right. It's like, hey, I can, like, feel your bass inside my house. Right. Like, I don't, like, I don't cool need it. that. Like, you don't even live here. Yeah. Like, your buddy lives here, but you don't. Right. Um, so I came home from Meekum, and I was pretty tired, and that started happening. It was oh, the second or yeah. third time that I'd asked him, and he turned it down and actually left. But last night, man, it just turned into a friggin' situation. Um, it happened again, and his buddy who lived in the complex was with him. Oh, here we go. And, yeah, it came up. Because I came up, and I was like, hey, man, do you mind turning it down? Like, you brought it down to the perfect level last night. You know, I could, I could hear a little bit, but it wasn't, like, moving me in my seat in my apartment. Um, so that'd be great. And his buddy came up, and he's like, oh, what are you going to do about it? I'm like... I'm just asking you politely to turn it down, like, as your neighbor, like, do you live here? He's like, yeah, right over there in that building. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, you're, like, attached to my building. Mm. Nice to meet you. I live right here. Like, you know, it'd be nice if you'd turn it down. Like, I work late at night, and you're kind of keeping me up. Right. You know, it happened a couple weeks ago. It happened last night. Just asking if we could turn it down. Well, what are you going to do if we don't? I'm like... I don't know. I guess probably call somebody to have you turn it down. Right. <laughs> what, are you going to call the cops? I'm like, well, yeah, that's who I would be calling to have right. you come turn it down because yeah. the office is closed. Right. Otherwise, I'd, uh, much like Fitz, his job in the yeah. office, somebody would come and say, hey, jackass over here has his music up crazy loud exactly. and the city ordinance in Austin for loud music up till 10 o'clock exists for musicians that are rehearsing. As right. a matter of fact, it says for cars, it should not be heard more than 30 feet away. <laughs> right. So, um, how is it I'm hearing it through my wall, like 50 feet away? <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah, you know, I ended up, did I did call, actually, and this is where the bully part comes in. Because, yeah, he started kind of bucking up, and I was like, I will call the cops. I have no problem with that. And mm -hmm. I came out, I had my notebook, I was taking notes, and I was actually on the phone on hold with code enforcement. And I'm taking pictures of their license plates and everything else. He's like, oh, what, are you too stupid to be able to dial 911? And I was like, actually, no, it's 311 that's code enforcement. 911 is for emergencies. So, uh, yeah, I'm on hold with them right now. So, <laughs> start, <laughs> start threatening, you know, like, you know, this is some bullshit, man. I ought to come over there and kick your ass. I'm like, nah, no, I don't that think would be so. That would, that would be really a bad decision, yeah. you know. <laughs> right. But it just blows my mind that somebody would even be that way. Like, right. I, all I did was politely come out and ask you to please turn your music down. Yeah, that dude like, must be very naive, dude, because if he starts <laughs> kicking his ass or even trying to. I'm actively on hold yeah. with the police. Yeah. <laughs> right. Dude, that's, that's like an all, like, all out call to the cops. Here's a big freaking well, party for if you, you guys. Think my phone, right. taser ready, if you think my phone nightstick. for the next 45 minutes to an hour yeah. has not been turned into a transponder like, the moment that I <laughs> dialed 311, a city services that connects to the police department, yeah. right. you're wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so as soon as that happened, my phone call started being recorded. So feel right. free. Do whatever you want, bro. <laughs> yeah. This guy's assaulting me. But, those guys are... You know, it's one of those, like, as a kid, growing up in apartments and walking to my school, like, I was bullied. You know, I remember mm -hmm. being bullied by people. And good God, man, I didn't weigh over 110 pounds wet until I was in college. Really? Like, right. seriously. And I was yeah. this height, boys. I grew, like, maybe an inch and a half from college till I was 25. Wow. Did they ever call that, you Slim Jim? Oh, dude, they called me all kinds of names. Like, <laughs> I, I was a tall, lanky dude. I walked funny. I had huge-ass feet. I was no good with a basketball. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I managed the basketball yeah. team. Like, as soon as I found out everything that went into it yeah. and the you fact managed. that I was nowhere near yeah. good enough, I was like, so you still looking for a manager there, coach? Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> no shame. I don't give a damn. Yeah. I still wanted to be part of the team, and nice. I was. So, mm -hmm. um, But, yeah, yeah, it was horrifying. So, yeah, yeah, I got teased. I got picked on quite a bit. And you learn to mm -hmm. kind of deal with it. Right. But it also makes me, at this point in life, like, even with my apartment complex, like, I don't put up with it. I just right. don't. Like, I don't abide by that shit in life, you right. know? And, yeah, I don't, I, I really think that if more people did something like that, yeah. because Amy was even asking me, she was like, God, I heard you on the phone with code enforcement and talking to the neighbor and everything. Is everything all right? I'm like, oh, yeah, absolutely, you know, and no yeah. problems. Um, but 
The real question is, how many other people are bothered by it and just absolutely do nothing? Right. There's a lot of them. Yep. How many yep. people just stand by and do absolutely nothing and right. just right. let it happen? Just let right. it happen. Just let it keep happening. Yeah. You know, and I don't know. I guess I'm at the point in life where I'm just not going to stand for that shit anymore. I'm not going to do that. Like, I will be the person in my neighborhood to fight for that. Right. <laughs> to be the one that's like, hey, man, like, you are continuously parking illegally in the wrong spot. Right. I will take care of that. Yeah, I like, mean. I will make it stop. I, uh, you know, I got teased some when I was growing up, you know. I mean, not a ton, but just, like, you know, like, you know, playful, like, stupid teasing that I got from, you know, yeah, some yeah. immature kids. Because we were all immature kids in first fucking grade, you know. Oh, sure. That's how it was. Um, but I remember, you know, I've always, I've always been, um, I've always been a defender. Um, yeah. Which is probably, it probably has a lot to do with why, I, you know, I've had some success as a you know a bouncer in a bar and yeah, you, you've always been big for your age um, right yeah. oh yeah yeah i've always so, been big so yeah. I mean, i've been i've been skinnier yeah. at points and whatever but i've always right, been right. a big guy right um and you know i'll i'll never forget my uh my my best friend in first grade was a girl named alex um and she was in a wheelchair um and my aunt at one point um, my aunt, this is again when I'm in first grade. Right. My aunt asked me at one point. She was like, "Hey, Matt. So you know, your you know your best friend Alex. Like, you know, is there is there something different about her? Is there you know like what is it? Yeah. Whatever." And I got very angry at yeah. my aunt, and I looked at her and I said. There is nothing different between her and me yep. or her and exactly. anybody else. She is a person just like everybody else. And I said it in the simplest right. terms because I was in, right. you know, first yeah. grade. But that's that's always that's the absolute truth though. I right. would I would have been on the defensive on that mm -hmm. too. Yeah. But yeah. that you know, that's always the way I've been. Is that, you know, I like you know, I I've I've always I've grown up very privileged. Um and, uh, and I mean, not to the point where I was like rich or anything like that, but we were, right. you know, we were always like, you know, I grew up <laughs> white middle class yeah, and straight. And so I never really had a whole lot going against me, <laughs> um, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. so, but as I also, other than yourself. right. But I also never took advantage of that. You yeah. know, I like ever since a young age, I've always been able to see, you know, like differences in people as basically a wash, like nothing, right? Yeah. I, you know, I show the same respect to anybody here, anybody well, there, and, and when I and when I see people like your, like you know, in in your circumstance, yeah. somebody somebody acting the way that this guy was, yeah. you know, I have no problem standing up to a person like that and That's being it. like, no, I'm being reasonable with you. I'm asking you something, and if you don't do it, then then we're going to have problems. Well, yeah, that yeah. Means then like then we got a problem. We, exactly. See, whatever, see right? I noticed a little flaw in this story. Well, not a flaw, but a, a difference. You said, I think, what, the day before you asked him? Yeah, yeah. The same thing. Oh, no, no. And it was I've fine. asked him a couple few times. Right. Yeah, and yeah. it was fine no. when he was by himself. Well, and that's, that's because this is a guy that doesn't actually live at the complex that has the blaring music. His buddy lives at the complex, and his buddy was the yeah. one that was bucking up and being yeah. like, why are you fucking with my homie? Like, why are right. you fucking with my guy? Right. You know, and it's like, well, because your guy is being pretty obnoxious yeah. right now. You should be, even be more that's understanding because you live here. You should, you know, you should be respectful of your neighbors because we're respectful of you. And we live in the same community. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's just it. That's just it. That's what, to me, the concept of neighbor comes down to is the fact that we live in the same community. And, you know, at some point we have to have a mutual respect for each other in order to make this thing work, regardless of anything. Right. You know, we have to have a mutual respect for each other. And on that note, everybody, we're going to wrap it for this segment of Dudes and Beer. We're going to come back. We're going to talk maybe a little bit more about bullies, bullying, um, things that are going on in society, stuff like that with bullies. So when we come back, we'll talk about it. All right? Yeah. Sometimes I find myself long regretting some foolish thing, some You've been listening to the Dudes and Beer Podcast. Visit us online at www.dudesandbeer.com. Find our audio streams on soundcloud.com and spreaker.com forward slash dudesandbeer. Follow us on Facebook forward slash dudesandbeer.
Thanks for listening, everybody. And until next time, drink responsibly. on the News and Beer podcast are intended for an audience of 18 and up and are solely those of the host and guests. They neither reflect the opinions or values of either the sponsors of Dudes and Beer or your mother. I mean, seriously. Have you ever heard these guys? They'll talk about anything. Whoa, whoa, hey, you think they're going to show it? <laughs> uh, they'll probably just blur it out. <laughs> whoa, check it out, Beavis. Grab your beverages and turn up your interweb. Solving the world's problems 12 ounces at a time. It's Dudes and Beer. Everybody, listen to me and return me my ship. I'm your captain. I'm your captain. Though I'm feeling mighty sick. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dudes and Beer podcast, coming at you live once again from the Austin Music Rooms here at the Cave. I am Chris Jordan, your host. We are back once again with Matthew Fitzgerald and Stephen Bishop, our co-host. Hello. And we are talking about the topic of bullies for this last part. Damn bullies. Well, I mean, you know, it's something that we deal with in all kinds of aspects of society that you really probably don't even think about most of the time. So whenever we get back from that, We will hear about it right after this word from our sponsor. Hey, are you a musician? Do you play guitar, bass, or synthesizers? Are you a studio engineer looking for that different sound? Well, fret no longer. Austin Hot Mods is there for you. From Boss to Ibanez, DoD to EHX and more, Austin Hot Mods provides over 50 different modifications and customizations to some of the most popular guitar pedals on the market, from vintage to modern. So if you're looking for that boutique custom sound on a Craigslist budget, look no further. Contact Austin Hot Mods today and mention that you heard it here on the Dudes and Beer podcast for 5% off your first guitar pedal modification. Visit them online at austinhotmods.com. Texas owned and operated and home of the Mod of the Month deal. That website again is austinhotmods.com. And once again, welcome back to part two of episode 35 of the Dudes and Beer podcast. Yes. Uh, We're talking about bullies. And, you know, I mean, I've dealt with one here recently that just kind of got on my nerves. And it was one of those, like, he didn't really even bully me necessarily, but it was one of those, like, kind of bucking up against you. Is this in, like, school? Well, well, I mean, I dealt with it in school. But, I mean, with my neighbor recently, where it was like, oh, what are you going to do, call the cops? And it's like, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I actually will. Um, right. I, like I said, I just don't put up with that. I don't uh, like kinder to that at this point in life. Um, it's something that I think is a bunch of jackassery that's for yeah. younger kids. And hey, feel free to have at it if you want to go to the schoolyard. Exactly. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But, when you told me that story, I automatically was thinking in my head, dude, this dude's yeah. like considerably younger. I'm sure. You know, he's he's. Yep. You know, it's it's ridiculous, man. Well, grow, grow up, well, dude. yeah, yeah. Grow up, man. but uh, but it's funny because we deal with bullies in so many aspects of the world nowadays, like right. uh, or at least in a perceived way. You know, like uh, with all the cyberbullying, things like that going on. You know, there's been a lot of uh, shaming for women on social media, things like that. You know, uh, there was a huge expose that was just put out about Monica Lewinsky. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, you know, because her entire life was ruined by a decision that she made when she was, like, in her 20s. Like, right. she was, like, 20-something years ago, guys. Right, 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 you right, know, right. like, let it go. Let she it went, go, dude. She wasn't even really the one that did anything. I mean, I'm right. not saying that she didn't do anything wrong. She was absolutely involved with somebody who was married. So that is wrong in and of itself. Right. But, you know... Your hey, decision making at that age. Clinton is went different. on with Clinton got to go on with his career. Right. Why is it that hers didn't get to go on? Right. Right. You know, and uh that's kind of the issue is that, you know, yeah, bullying happens in so many aspects of society nowadays. You know, and it's it's interesting to me 
to see uh, stories in the news at schools and stuff like that. You know, had you guys ever dealt with anything like that at the schools that y'all went to where y'all, like, specifically had, like, the school bully? Because we definitely had one that was, like, on the bus in junior high for a little while. Yeah, I mean, I remember, I I don't know that I would specifically say, like, the school bully or the, you know, whatever. Um, You know, there were, but there were plenty of people who, you know, like, they tried to exert their... Uh, power or masculinity or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, in in whatever ways they did, and I mean, I I remember, you know, we were talking on the last on the last episode about you know how I how I consider myself a, a defender in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um. Same here. You know, but I like I remember specifically there was a, when I was in middle school. I think it was f- it was fifth or sixth grade. Um, a good friend of mine. Um, I mean, he was in he was in band and orchestra. Yep. So every day he carried like his uh, violin or viola, and then yeah. like a you know like a trumpet or a trombone or whatever. Like he was always carrying like two cased instruments on yeah. the bus and into school and whatever. And I remember this uh, this kid on our bus. He was this fucking punk kid. Um, and he would like, you know, he'd try to like talk all this and talk all that. Sure. Very similar to, very similar to yeah, the guy yeah. in your parking lot, right? Yeah. Um, and we were, uh, we were getting off the bus one day and this kid, this kid started like, you know, my buddy is carrying his two instruments off the bus and this kid just like was like talking shit to him and was like swatting like his instruments and like, and like messing with him and like swatting yeah. the back of him. So he was like having a hard time with him, whatever. That's and not cool. Oh, yeah. not cool at all. And as soon as we got off the bus, we're talking, this is in like the middle of December or the middle of January in Minnesota. So there was snow. Yeah. And we're not talking just like there was snow. We're talking like our. Yeah, like, it's our, like sheets of snow. Well, our, <laughs> our, our walkway up to the doors of our school was totally clear. But everything on the sides where there would usually be grass was like three foot high with snow because it had been shoveled or snow blowed and like you yep. know, whatever. So oh, there yeah. were snow banks on either side. Yeah. And I remember I got so mad at what this kid was doing that when we got off the bus, I like walked up behind him and I was like, hey. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It was exactly like that. It was exactly like that. Round one. And on top of that, I had at least forty pounds on the kid at the time. Mm, right. And I like went up behind <laughs> him and I went stallion. And I went, hey. And he turned around and I shoved him into the snowbank. Like I straight up like like I grabbed his jacket and I threw him into the snowbank. And he just looked at me like like yeah, a world what, shook. Like, nice. What? And I was like, don't ever fucking do that again. Nice. And I walked right? the fuck yeah. away. From, yeah, yeah. You know, Show him who's bold. Exactly. It was one of those things where it was like, man, I'm not going to tolerate you fucking acting like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, trying to walk around like you're right. some sort of, you know, like, you know, I, I, I absolutely, you know, and that's, you know, again, going back to like, you know, that's kind of always the way I've been, you know. Yep. I don't like, you know, if I piss somebody off, if I'm too loud, if I'm too, you know, like whatever, I apologize for that oh, because yeah, yeah, I'm a absolutely. reasonable fucking person. Right, right. Same here. You know, right. But yeah. uh, and hey, know. I'll I'll be the first one to admit I can get carried away. Oh, absolutely. And I can get I can get freaking loud. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. It can sound like I'm angry, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no it's funny my uh my girlfriend Jen, she uh she and I have been together over 6 years now. Um and she has only seen me like truly like at my core angry on probably seven or eight different occasions. Yeah. Because when I get angry, it's scary. Yeah, yeah. It's scary for everybody involved, including myself, because I go just, you know, like, white noise in my eyes, and yep. I get, you know... Yeah, I same get, here. I, I get yeah. just, like, the like the serious fire going on. It's, it's rage. Not, exactly. It's rage. You know? And like, there's a, 100%. And there's a, you know, there's a difference between, like... 28 days later. Right? But there's a difference between, you know, reasonable people like us experiencing rage because of somebody yeah. else, yeah. as opposed to, you know, somebody else, like... Well, like, yeah, you know, and I've, and I've said it before. Right, right, you know, to. it's funny because, like, I love Austin. I really do. I love the concept. I love the laid-back atmosphere. But, you know, the one thing I can't stand, we are probably one of the most self-involved cities oh, in the absolutely. state of Texas. And oh, just, yeah. like, totally self-absorbed, and everybody's in their own little bubble. Right. And really has no concept as to how they affect the person, like, right next to them. 
You know, like I see it all the time. I work in downtown Austin all the time, you know, and I walk back and forth from my venues. Right, right. All kinds of stuff to go meet my wife where she's picking me up. Right. And, you know, like I see people consistently just like stroll into the street looking at their cell phone. You know, right. just like they're just in their own little bubble. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, and and that to me is the issue that it comes in with with neighbors and bullies to begin with is that we tend to exist in our own little bubble and we tend to think that yeah. our actions don't affect other people um, when really they have a great great impact on others in a direct radius around you. Exactly. Check you this. Know. I got I got a bully story. Go it ahead. happened to me when I was in third grade. This is what happened. I was kind of like a McFly or something, yeah. you know, and I was always bullied on, right? And uh, so anyways, the, the considerably larger guy that was always the big bully for me or whatever, uh, you know, he was, he, you know, I, I had enough one day, you know, and uh, so, um, you know, he was pushing me around from behind and stuff and, you know, getting on my nerves. And then... Um, just so happens I had been taking this little karate class. <laughs> I uh, I did this go. I did this spin around kick, not knowing where my target was. Hit him right in the nuts, and uh, the dude went down like big time. Nice. And um, and then uh, I I proceeded to get in trouble. <laughs> in trouble. I was in trouble. Trouble time. <laughs> Square in the nuts, guys. Square in the nuts. <laughs> Straight up. But the funny ending or ironic ending to this story, <laughs> I'll cut it short, me and him became best friends after that. We were yeah. best buds. Yeah, well, I mean, and I remember distinctly in junior high, I had a guy that I was friends with who just started running with the wrong crowd and stuff like that. Uh, I was headed home. I lived probably about a quarter mile away from my junior high. And, uh, you know, would walk home, all that kind of stuff. I showed you all the other day, like, this is the apartments I lived in. And I went right. to, I went from kindergarten through high school, like, right there within a one-block radius. Right. You know, so it was like, I was walking to school, like, pretty much my whole life. And, uh, yeah, it was it was strange that this guy, at the time, you know, I was living somewhere that I should have been taking the bus home, but I was just walking and literally came up behind me and punched me in the back of the head. Oh! Uh, tried to start a fight with me, and there's right. all his homies that he's been hanging with. Like, oh, yeah, what's yeah. up? And I'm like, dude, what the hell are you doing, man? Yeah. Like, mm. what's that all about? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> right. we've, we've known each other pretty much all of our lives. Like, yeah. right. what have I done to you? Right. Like, that just makes no sense to me. And I picked up my bag, and me and my buddy Danny Franz, like, walked home. And it was like, what the... Like, I remember him standing there kind of, like, deflated, like, oh, damn, like, I was supposed to jump and beat the hell out of somebody, and well, he just kind of walked away. Like, that is not what I was expecting at all. <laughs> right. He just kind of called me out and went, yeah, I'm sorry, man, I'm not even going to take part in this horse shit. Right. Like, and that was smooth, like, seventh grade, something like that, where at that point I was just, I was done with those kind of games in life. I right. didn't, I didn't comprehend it. I didn't get it. You know, I understood that people teased me. Hey, granted, I was a pretty teasable individual. Right, I was right. a dork. I read yeah. all kinds of crazy, you know, uh, sci-fi, so not necessarily sci-fi stuff, but science technology stuff. Yes. Like, I would check books out on, like, yes, amulets and talismans and, mm -hmm. you know, how to build lasers and stuff. Right. Now I know how to build a laser and I could actually do it. Back exactly. then it was just learning the principles. Right. But, you know, rocketry, just all kinds of shit that, you know, utterly tagged me for an ass kicking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> much, much less my size and the fact that I'm a pretty witty guy. Yeah. You know, like it, most of the time it got me out of it and I ended up being friends with the dude that was trying to say something or do something later on, but... Yeah, I like it. It made me a target quite a bit of the time. This dude's a uh, nerd! <laughs> <laughs> Literally. But, yeah, I guess it made me to where later on in life, much like you, Fitz, I just, I don't deal with that crap, man. I just don't. Like, yeah. even even whenever my apartment complex was doing stuff with me and Amy and the flooding in our apartment, it was straight up, like, forensic status like I will take pictures of everything and document it and bring it to you on a regular basis and email you about it right and like create a trail of evidence yeah and like I will not stand with what I pay for not being given to me right you know yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it really is interesting. You know, I, I, all this talk reminds me of a story when I was when I was working in Minneapolis at the pizza place I was working at. A uh, little shout out to Mesa Pizza, my homies up there. Heck yeah. Um, but I worked in this, you know, late night pizza shop, pizza by the slice. Primary clientele after midnight or one a.m. was a bunch of just like dumb, drunk, like frat boys and yeah, sorority yeah, girls, absolutely. right? You know, and there were plenty of times that I had to break up fights in there or like kick people out or things like that. But there was a night, and and I remember this specifically, like a year before I moved down here, there was a night where this this girl came through, and she was like wasted. Yep. I mean, mm. she was just like completely like mm. drunk. And she got her slice of pizza and she was like putting like ranch and hot sauce on it and whatever. Oof. And we Heartburn. were trying to like we were trying to like move her along and, and be like, Hey, can you move over here? You know, whatever. And she yeah. was being like, Oh fuck you, like blah blah blah. Like she I mean, she was being obnoxious and getting in our faces and whatever. Yeah. And so she finally moved down the counter. And she was putting, like, hot sauce or whatever on her pizza, and this other girl walked up, and, like, this other girl was, like, standing there watching her, and this girl was, like, the second girl was, like, hey, you should move. Mm. You should move. You shit me, I love it. You shit me, I love it. And the first girl was, like, whatever, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. And the second... (laughs) And the second girl, the second girl is like, Man, no. Me. The second girl is like, no. Exactly. Cat yeah, fight. Yeah. Cat fight. Here we go. So the second girl was like, you know, yet again, she was like, no, seriously, you should move. Like, we're trying to, like, get our pizza and whatever. And this girl, the first girl, who was super wasted, like, turned around and started, like, squirting hot sauce at the other girl. Oh, oh that's awesome. Okay. Yes. So, so, so check classy. this out. So I'm check such a out. fan of that. So at what point the, do they take off their clothes and roll around? No, they, dude. Oh, this, no, sitting, no. this sitting like na- late night USA channel in the 1980s, bro. <laughs> yeah. No. So the second girl, Gladiator. as soon as she saw hot sauce coming her way, she like ducked away and swatted the <laughs> bottle out of this girl's hand and literally like pushed the girl. And I, no joke, guys, no joke. Like to your point earlier about the like fucking karate kick, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this girl like, Push the girl a little bit. The second girl, like, pushed this drunk girl a little bit. No and then just, like, swooped and, like, high-kicked her in the back of the head. No! Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, straight up, just, like, yeah. like leg up and, like, high-kicked her in the back of the head. And this girl, like, like got kicked and, like, hit her head on the counter and then, like, turned around and grabbed the other girl's hair. Oh. And I was, like, watching... And I looked over at my bouncer, and my bouncer was looking at me. This like this, this big dude Juan was looking at me, being like, "Uh, okay." Uh, and then he finally got in there, and he like broke it up, and you know whatever. But I mean, it was. Just I would have like, been like Beavis or a butthead with the headset on. I well, love you. And you know, it's, it's funny. You know, like. It, to me, it, working in bars, That's I saw awesome. a lot of it, mm-hmm. and I. I was recently on a gig and explaining to people like how much I love the corporate environment as opposed to working in bars and rock and roll. And it's not that I'm not working with drunks. It's that I'm working with a different ilk of drunks. Right. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm working with a different style of drunks. Right. Yeah. These these are drunks with class, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Um, and, you know, literally it's the fact of like... I. I It was funny to me. I would work in Maine, and no matter the club, didn't matter. Um, If it was a Grateful Dead or a jam band or, let's just say, bluntly, to pun intend, um, a reefer-friendly crowd as opposed to a drinking-heavy crowd. Right. right. um, The instance of fight went down by, like, 95%. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe somebody with a beer or two and be like, hey, man, you're like Scarlet Begonia and my girl, bro. Like... (laughs) (laughs) What's up with that? Take that as a compliment, brother. But, you know, it was never anything that would start an issue. However, you get a good, like... Heavy metal, hard rock night with a bunch of hard drinkers nice. that are drinking their Peeber Pounders and their shots of whiskey. And uh, yeah, man, you were bound yeah. for a mosh pit. You were <laughs> down at like, I have teeth missing out of my head from breaking up a mosh pit from a tiny little girl that was just trying to enjoy a show that yeah. was really good that resulted in a mosh pit around her. Right. Wow. That I tried to stop at one point. 
my door guy just couldn't get there in time. <laughs> he was busy dealing with the door and IDs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so I stopped it once, and then I went to stop it again, and this dude that was quite a bit larger than me was Ooh, there. That's hard to um, believe. And when they... Granted, he just swung an elbow. Hey, he was just mosh pitting. Right, he yep. swung an elbow, popped me in the mouth, and I grabbed said elbow and turned it around and pushed him up the stairs and out of my club. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Made sure he tripped on the door stoop on the way out. Um, and, yeah, I woke up Thanksgiving Day with, like, a tooth missing out of my mouth. Um, right. In, in Massachusetts. Dude, I was just but, washing Yeah, it. you know, it, it always tended to be something related to alcohol or something related to that that yeah, would cause somebody to be right. that prick ass in the bar that is just, like, absolutely intolerable and uncontrollable. That's like, man, what like, what are you even doing right now? Why are, why are you doing that? Right. That's just jackassery. And it... You know, totally, like I was saying, totally. um, this last week I was on a gig and I was talking about how much I loved working corporate events rather than rock and roll. And I guess it was the day that I got business cards mm. and started selling myself. And, like, my talents were now my business. I didn't want to preclude my talents with liquor. Um, and I stopped taking, like, bar tabs as payment. Like, I'm not going to take your $50 in liquor because, nah. number one, it's nah. not actually $50. If nope. you let me drink $50 of your value in liquor, <laughs> we'll have some fun tonight, buddy. Right. Yeah, you yeah. can just <laughs> give me a bottle of your Jack, of your freaking Johnny Walker yeah. and uh, done. Right. <laughs> Leave your Johnny Walker But on that the ain't table. the case. It's a $50 tab, which means closer to about 5 bucks, which quite honestly and professionally is pretty freaking insulting. Yeah. Um, because... I'm not going to get drunk on my shift, even if I have a couple drinks. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm here from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., 3 a.m. professionalism a. there. You know, bar closes at 2, so that means I'm here till smooth 3, 3.30. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if I'm not getting paid properly, it may as well be saying, welcome to Walmart, how can I help you on the midnight shift? Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I look at it. So, yeah, like, it, to me, there came a point where... That kind of foolishness just stopped. Right. And I really got a new perspective whenever I walked into bars, whenever I worked in bars, as to that person that was the asshole. Mm -hmm. You know, and I really didn't want to be that person. Nah. Um, but more than that, like, I guess really just lost a lot of respect for people real fast. Because it was like, holy crap. Like, look at how fast they turn to that. Like, look right. at how fast that, like... That switch just goes on. Right. You know, and I, I'll even say, like myself, like we were talking about in the last segment, Rage, you know, um, I, hey, man, sometimes that switch just goes on, and it's like a Hulk reflex, mm -hmm. and I can't stop it. I'm I'm not going to go out and not say something right. at that point. Um, yeah, and, absolutely. And I hope that it's something good and something right. Uh, I try to keep it something good and something right, but... Uh, I also try to keep myself from being the bully in that situation. Right. You know, and even whenever it comes to breaking that stuff up, like I remember going to court one time when I worked in Maine. Bubba's Sulky Lounge, I love you. They had the only lighted dance floor from the 70s. Nice. Um, awesome. I put on quite a few shows there. And I remember one show that I put on, I went outside to go have a cigarette. <clears throat> and there was a little kind of narthex between the main just a little breezeway between the main entrance and the entrance into the bar and that's where the door person was and I went to go have a cigarette and as I went to go have a cigarette this woman that was coming in from having a cigarette was having a conflagration with a woman that was going out to have a cigarette uh -oh. and I just happened to be square in the middle uh -oh. and somebody was doing somebody's man and I can't believe you had the nerve to show up here tonight you whore yeah right. whore Whoa. was the exact word <laughs> whore nice and, the, <laughs> and it was like wham yeah. action just like I'm in the middle of it like hey ladies come on can't find you know, two. And, <laughs> literally like my arm gets grabbed in the middle of it and, oh. and bitten and, <laughs> and bitten and bitten and I'm like that's not the person you're trying to bite um <laughs> 
I managed to get them separated. The door person was cracking up. They were like, dude, that is the most civilly I've ever seen anybody, anybody it, break up a was fight. Was it once been ever. twice shot? So, like, <laughs> literally, I had to, like, like, I had tooth marks on my arm and everything. You Jeez. know, it, nothing broke the skin, but, Whoa. you know, it was. Yeah. Normal's barred on this. Shit. Yeah, yeah. The lady apparently wanted to add a restraining order against the other for a while. Whoa. Like, yeah, I had to go to court and testify. How like, Dare you show up oh at my, my club. god oh my god dude it was absolutely insanity <laughs> but you know that's the kind of stuff where it's just like you know it's funny you get alcohol involved you get liquor yeah. involved you get ego involved right and man you're just you can end up with a nasty situation with yeah. a freaking crit right um so you know it's like how do you defuse that how do you handle that situation and it's literally trying to be and keep as calm as you can be and deal with just the facts at hand. Just deal with the facts at hand. Because I don't know the situation of the chick walking into my bar and the lady walking out of my bar right. and, you know, the issues that ensued until, like, hours later that, hey, right. you know, so-and-so was sleeping with so-and-so's man and that's why they got into a fight and I was in the middle of it and got my arm bit and got to fill out police reports at 2.30 a.m. and mm. then go to court a couple months later Whoa. and put somebody back in jail. Um, but... <laughs> But that was one of those situations that, like, problems. well, well, it's literally like, how do you diffuse that situation when it's happening? How right. do you diffuse that time bomb? And like I said, right. the the door guy was like, I have never mm -hmm. in my life seen somebody be polite to somebody that is biting their arm actively. Right. It's just like, excuse me, ma'am, yeah. you're not biting the person that you're trying to bite. Right. Were the words that came out of your mouth, Chris? Right. <laughs> it was like you were actively polite to the person that was attacking you. Should have said, "Ladies, <laughs> you should have said, ladies, the Russians are attacking right now. Y'all like, need to hide, get in the bunker." You, you know that takes some presence of mind whenever you're in that moment to yeah. to try and keep things as calm as possible and try to yeah, separate yeah, something. Yeah. And but yeah. there are but there are also times where you like there is no calming the situation down. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, I remember. Like, you know, when I was working as a bouncer, uh, you know, downtown Minneapolis, um, the biggest fight that I ever broke up, and here's another fight story for the podcast, <laughs> which is, I, I hope, you know, keeping people interested. Heck yeah. Um, but uh, I remember, we, you know, it was, uh, it was a relatively, like, typical night. It was a Friday night, and I was out, you know, uh, working the door, and I was out on the patio, and uh, and this girl was like drunk and like getting in some other girl's face for yeah. no good reason. Mm. I mean it wasn't like it wasn't like It's like some of the hardest know. fights to break up. Women. Right. I mean it was just like this girl was wasted and she was getting in this other girl's face and like talking shit and like whatever. And so my bouncer came out and our head bouncer um was a guy who is straight up like three inches taller than me. Wow. And that's big defi and definitely like Wide as you? Well, as wide as yeah. me, but actually like fit. Wow. You know, like he's the, like he's not, <laughs> yeah. he's not he's not like completely ripped. Right. But but he's definitely like a buff dude. Okay. Like take, <laughs> right? you know, take away the layer of beer that I have on me yeah, yeah, yeah. and replace it with muscle. Get rid of the party like, ball down there. Yeah, line. exactly. Yeah. Like this guy I mean this guy's straight up <laughs> but, three inches oh. taller than me and like Built, dude. That, and that's a scary dude. From so pictured. he came out and told the girl to leave, and then was about to escort her out. Mm -hmm. And this girl threw a cup and at the girl that she was arguing with. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he grabbed her by the arm and was taking her out of the patio, which was just, I mean, you know, it was a wide sidewalk with a with a metal or aluminum like you know fencing yeah. around it. You know, mobile fencing. Yep. Right. Um. And so he goes to take her out, and her boyfriend sees what's going on. Oh, and he's like, here we go. And he's like, hey, that's my girlfriend. Oh. That's my girl, dude. Yeah. And Get your hands off, bro. You're her. manhandling my girl. Right? Let's go, brother. So her, <laughs> her boyfriend is like, yeah, me too. Um, her boyfriend is like probably two inches shorter than me and twice as wide as me. You know, so we're talking two inches shorter than me, but probably like three hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty, you know, solid butterball boy. Um, and he, uh, 
Yeah, grab him a, uh, grab him a mosaic. Man. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, he straight up um ran up to my Uh-oh. bouncer and spear tackled my bouncer from behind. No, ah. and took him down to the ground and took, oh. him, and took a table down with oh, him yeah, and there was it. broken glass on the ground. <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. Hey. There's no timing like that. Right. Um. So he, so he takes my bouncer down. And he's oh, like, he's on top of my bouncer. My bouncer like rolled over oh. and was like, and was like scuffling with him. And I went and I like immediately jumped on this dude, wrapped my arm around his neck and like pulled him back. And as soon as my bouncer got space, he pushed a little bit and then threw an elbow right into this guy's face and oh, broke wow. his nose. Like I heard his nose break <laughs> like, oh. from, like right oh, in yeah. front of me oh, as I had my arm okay. around his neck. Okay. So my bouncer. Oh, shit. Does this, gets out, gets on top of him and throws him in cuffs. I walked over, or walked, I ran over like, you know, yeah. 15 feet to the entrance of the patio where there were like eight people fighting now. And I started like throwing people to the sidewalk yeah. out towards the road and like getting them out of there. And literally 30 seconds later, two cops come up with the fucking bear mace out yeah. and they maced the shit yeah. out of everybody. Ooh, it didn't yeah. matter. It didn't matter if you were involved or not. They maced everybody. There and you go. Way I, to go, cops. Yeah. I was Way to lucky, show up and be the hero. Yeah. I was lucky enough. <laughs> Where's the tasers, baby? I was lucky enough to turn. After I threw a guy to the oh. ground, I turned and I saw them start spraying. Oh, yeah? And I ducked back inside the doors. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. the double doors were open. And I ducked back inside the doors. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, well, I'm not getting maced right now. Yeah. And I waited, like, 30 or 45 seconds. Like, I waited yeah. almost a minute. Yeah. Well, and then, I, just and then I went like, to go back outside. Yeah. And as soon as I walked outside the door... You still got that shit in your I head. was just like, oh, yeah. no! Yeah. And I turned yeah, yeah, and went yeah. back inside the door. It, no, it's still I mean, a cl- particulate it cloud just, out there. It doesn't yeah. go away for a the long time. It was ridiculous. You've still well, got the plume. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it's literally the fact that people don't understand how fast, how fast that shit escalates. Escalates, and right. I've said it before on the podcast. Ultimately, like as someone who studied psychology and sociology, ultimately, we are animals. When it mm-hmm. comes down to our brain and the way it works, there are some amazing, amazing things that happen with memory and synaptic reflex, and the way that we are able to remember things mm-hmm. rapidly, the way right. that we're able to think about complex solutions to many problems. Um, however, ultimately, deep inside of our brain is a part that looks like an almond called the amygdala. Yeah. That is like a reptilian form of the brain that is literally where a fight-or-flight response comes from, mm-hmm. and it is the most basic, primal mm-hmm. type of brain that exists in all Jeez. of nature. Like, it, it ties us directly to the animals in the way that we react to stuff. Yeah. And, like... You know, if you go up and you see a flock of blackbirds somewhere and something comes to them, one of them flies, they all fly. It's Mm -hmm. instinctual. Doesn't matter if it's a 30-foot hop or a three-mile flight. One of them flies, they all fly. Um, Because it's an instinctual panic. And we as people have the same thing. Um, We have an instinctual panic whenever you're in an enclosed space, whenever you're in a club, whenever you're in something like that. Um... It's hard to de-escalate a situation that is escalated mm-hmm. because it's, there is so much in such a small space that's going on, and just in the primal brain, it's I was something. Say, it's that, in its primal form. Yeah, or yeah. Literally, stage. you're in pan- People are yeah. in panic mode. Yeah. At that point, you know they're in well, it's utter, fight or flight. Yeah, it's an utter fight or flight situation, exactly. And especially like the club I worked at in Maine was like maybe 50 foot deep it's 65 foot deep by 50 foot wide at its most you know small little basement club so once you get people inside of there and that kind of stuff starts happening and you got three bands full of equipment on the sidewall closing people in like Oof. it becomes a very tight cramped space mm-hmm. rapidly where that kind of energy builds quickly right and can really friggin ignite into something rapidly mm-hmm. that is out of control um and it's wild it's wild right. and to see um even the people that are on the side that are like basically yeah. a, you know connected to it or you know i mean they get pulled into it sometimes 
when they don't even want to be in it, but then they'll flip a switch. Exactly. Well, and you, you can't help but flip a switch because, yeah. as, as Fitz said, it's a fight or flight. And, you know, when it comes to bullies, when it comes to stuff like that, it's the same thing. You know, um, eventually, eventually you get to the point, like I said, where you're bigger like me. And right. uh, you fill that into your body and your frame eventually, and you have no problem standing up to somebody and being like, "Hey, like, no, that's not the way it is. I'm sorry. Right. You know, I'd I'd love to tell you that it is, but that that ain't the way it is in life, partner. And I'm not going to deal with that. No. And if you think that other people will, I guarantee you, there's somewhere else out in the world that there's someone like me that uh, ain't going to deal with that shit. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, grow up, dude. So, you know, yeah. And, you know, um, it does take that inner pride, that inner self, that inner motivation to do something about it, to be bigger. Sometimes than you got to take the high road. The situation. Well, uh, well, and to, to make sure that, hey, you know, there are babies asleep in this apartment complex. Yeah. Right. There are other people that work night shifts, you know, stuff like that. They may be trying to get some sleep. You know, there is. It's not like you're, yeah. you know, out in the country like where All my right. brother lives. Where hey, you know, we got, we got a good piece between neighbors. Right. You know, we got like half an acre of property between yeah. me and the next neighbor. You know, something like that, where you can have your stereo up and it's not going to bother people necessarily. Like but, living in a community, you got to yeah. think. Just, you know, beyond just thinking of yourself. Hey, man, think of your neighbors. Think of the people that, you know... Well, it's thinking of a society. And, yeah. and granted, you know, I, I used to point out to the kids that I taught for years, it, it's great to think that you can cure all the ails of the world. In real truth, you can only change the world within your own arm's reach or how fast you can run. Right. <laughs> That's really all that you can truly affect. 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 Not effect, but affect. And you not know, Affleck. Which is, which is like what you can change. The only thing you can truly change is what you can touch, what you can grab hold of, um, what you can actively do something about. Short mm -hmm. of going to Darfur right. or sending a boatload of money to Darfur that I don't have, there's nothing that I can do about the situation in Darfur. No. Unfortunately, that's horrifying. But, uh, right. you know, short of those two solutions, there's nothing that I can truly do about it. But there's a lot that I can do about the world that I actively live in. Exactly. There's a lot that I can actively do about the neighborhood that I live in. Yep. And taking this concept um, of reclaiming your streets, reclaiming your neighborhood from people like this, is what brings us back to a point of having a proper society where we can actually deal with each other and have block parties mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, the day of block parties and stuff is gone, Unfortunately, and you know, yep. it's it's nice to have block parties and know your neighbors mm -hmm. and be invested in the people around you, because whenever you're gone, those are the people that are like, "Hey, I don't know that car. Why is it parked next to their house?" Yep, yep. right. That's yep. Fitz's house. That's not yep. Fitz's car or his lady's car. Right, right. What the what the hell? And they're out of town for two weeks. Yeah, yeah. You know? Why is there a car parked there? I don't know that van. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only this kind of concept and this kind of mentality that brings that around. And that's what keeps us safe. That's what helps build a society. And, right. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get back to that. Hopefully we can get to a point where people actively care about each other and the world around them. So, you know, yeah. On that note, everybody, that pretty much wraps it up for this edition of Dudes and Beer. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in over Meekum. We saw some great, Absolutely. great numbers yeah, over the Meekum thank weekend you guys. during that show. So we want to thank everybody who tuned in. Thank you, everybody who tunes in on a regular basis. Right. It's because of y'all that we keep on doing it. But uh, we love hey, you. we're going to keep on doing it anyway. We're going to keep on doing what we do. I love you, uh, man. So until next time, everybody, if you can't be good, be good at it. Keep them frosty. Ow! We'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Take care, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Dudes and Beer Podcast. Visit us online at www.dudesandbeer.com. Find our audio streams on soundcloud.com and spreaker.com forward slash dudesandbeer. Follow us on Facebook, forward slash dudes and beer. Thanks for listening, everybody. And until next time, drink responsibly.